This is Transistor.fm. First time on air. Nice. <laughs> That's the kind of show we want to run here. Hey, welcome to Product People, the podcast for people who want to build beautiful products. I'm Justin Jackson, and I'm joined by my co-host in Edmonton, Mr. Kyle Fox. Hello there. How's it going, so, Kyle? Uh, it's going quite well. How about you? I'm doing well. No snow here in Vernon. I knew you were going to bring that up, jackass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I your Instagram photos aren't teasing enough. That's right. I took all those in the summer, and I just I just keep uploading them to Instagram uh, now. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't so what's going on this week? We've got something new. Yeah. Um, so previously, it's just been you and I kind of babbling and ranting for our last two shows, which actually I think went pretty well. But I think today is kind of the first step towards becoming a real podcast as we have our first guest. Exciting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so uh, our guest today is Dalen Woods. Wait a sec, is it Dalen Woods or Wood? Just Wood, yeah. Just, Just Wood. wood. <laughs> okay, Dalen Wood, singular. Yeah. All right. Unless he's so, possessing uh, something like Dalen Woods microphone. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. With the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, the podcast for pedantics. That's us. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we've got Dalen Wood on the show. Uh, this hey evening. guys, thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no, um, I'm happy to be here. So uh, I've known known Dalen, and I think Justin, you kind of have met him maybe previously before. He's kind of a fairly well known um, web developer designer here in Edmonton, and um, he's one of those guys that kind of I think it's fair to say sort of sits on the fence between development and design. Like you don't just code, you don't just design, you kind of dabble in both and are, are adept at both. And uh, uh, recently uh, there was an event here in Edmonton WordCamp. So it's kind of like a WordPress, WordPress weekend conference, but most of the things are not actually WordPress specific. They're just kind of general to the web. And uh, you gave a interesting sounding workshop there about building prototypes and minimum viable products using WordPress as a platform. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I think that's, so when, when I saw that on the schedule, um, I immediately was like, oh man, we should get Dale in on the show. Cause this is actually something that Justin and I have talked about in the past about, um, kind of when you want to get, when you have a product idea, you want to validate it or you want to get something off the ground quickly, uh, you know, WordPress is kind of sneered at by a lot of, um, I guess, elitist developers. And, yeah, uh, for sure. <laughs> and, you know, it's pretty easy to dismiss it as just like a way to build blogs and websites, but um, it's kind of really gotten sophisticated in the last few years, I think. And I think maybe a lot of people don't really know how, um, how powerful of a, platform it really is like you know it's it's probably bordering on almost like an application framework like rails or django maybe not quite that far but getting there so um so we thought it'd be interesting to have you on the show and um and basically give us your two-hour workshop that you gave at work <laughs> okay yeah okay. in less than 30 minutes though yeah so talk right. fast <laughs> Everyone open up Inter Internet Explorer. <laughs> um, maybe actually before we get into it, though, Dalen, um, do you want to just like uh, take a minute to just introduce yourself and sort of talk about, I don't know, your your background, like how you got into web stuff and um, sure, what yeah. you do now and, and what sort of got you interested in this whole WordPress thing? Yeah, absolutely. Um... So I've been doing this for quite a while. It's almost been 12 years now, I think, which is, makes me a bit of a dinosaur. Um, so I started out doing, actually, I started out doing Flash development, believe it or not. That's, um, that kind of dates me right there. Um, that's how I learned how to program, was with ActionScript. Um, like back in from, the go-to and play days? like Exactly, yeah, absolutely. Okay, Action, yeah. ActionScript 4, man, that's where I started. And... Uh, 
Yeah, and I mean, uh, I used to, I learned how to use Director, like a uh, Macromedia Director, and do all kinds of crazy stuff with that. Um, and that's kind of how I got into the industry. And back then, um, if you could sort of build fl like a Flash website and have stuff kind of moving around and music and stuff, people thought you were like amazing. And <laughs> I was able to sort of fool a bunch of people into hiring me and um, kind of worked my way kind of up and... I mean, obviously, the industry changed along that the uh, along along that path, and um, I got into HTML and I got into uh, JavaScript, um, and then the whole sort of CSS thing happened, um, and I got into that, and then eventually I kind of wound up um, discovering PHP um, and got into actually building and like building sort of database-driven websites and that sort of thing. Um, I didn't actually get into WordPress until I started. Um, I actually got a job as an instructor at Nate here, which is the uh, Northern Alberta Institute of Technology in Edmonton. Um, and basically, I got hired to teach Flash because um, they needed someone. Um, one of the instructors went on sick leave, and they needed someone really quick, so I kind of got thrown into that. Um, and that gig kind of evolved into me teaching web development and this and that. And um, I kind of discovered WordPress along the way there and got um, just started teaching it to my students as sort of a here's like a here's like a simple solution for you to sort of build like data driven websites or like content managed websites for clients and stuff. Um, yeah, and so I taught at Nate for a long time for about six years, um, and the whole while I was still doing web development on the side. I had a kind of a company that. I did kind of freelance stuff with, and then about two and a half years ago, I decided to leave Nate and take it full time. Um, so I started another company called North Republic, and I do web development uh, and web application development, that sort of stuff. And I've been doing that now for about two years. I use WordPress for a lot of my projects, not everything, but um, it's definitely something that I use or have used quite a bit. And uh, yeah, that's that's sort of the the, the quick version of that. Beautiful. Cool. You know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm so excited about this topic because I think about this all the time because I am not, um, I'm like, I'm a hack at a lot of things. And uh, WordPress for me, like, I love WordPress because it, it's one of those things that you can just, you can hack in it really easy. And yeah, I've, for sure. a couple of times I've, I've kind of hacked up uh, product prototypes and, um, and, uh, like, for example, like even with using like, uh, like gravity forms, there's a lot of startups out there that are building products that you can, you can, um, you, <laughs> you can basically copy their functionality just using gravity forms, which is, you know, oh, one yeah, plugin. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, gravity forms was the best 200 bucks I ever spent for sure. Yeah. So um, I, it paid for itself like 50, 60 times over easy. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about where you're going to go with this. So what originally got you interested in maybe building products in WordPress? Where, where did that start? Well, you know what? It came out of sort of um, like I do a lot of custom web development for people. But what I found was um, like I'll get hired by an organization and they need to build whatever, like a job board or something like that, something that where you're taking – input from people, saving it in a database, and then filtering it and whatever, right? I mean, there's a thousand different examples. Mm -hmm. um, and what I found was a lot of times, a lot of these clients already had existing websites, and a lot of them were already using WordPress. So what I started doing was, instead of sort of starting from scratch, because I'm a PHP developer, right, I would, which WordPress is written in PHP, so what I would do is I would start, I would start with WordPress, and I would kind of use it as sort of the the, the, the bottom um, or starting point, right? I mean, WordPress gets kind of a bum rap because it's not really a framework. It's a CMS, but what it does is it has, like, it has a really solid sort of, especially with user management. Like, I mean, out of the gate, you install WordPress and you've got a full sort of user management system, and it's got this crazy API that is makes it really easy to manage users, like, programmatically. Like, rather, I mean through the admin you, and with plugins you can do it, but um, if you're a developer, it makes it really easy for you to get in there and actually create like user roles and different levels of users and give them access to different things. Yeah, um, well, even for a not... Building, I, 
a non-developer can do that too. That's what's great. Oh, yeah. is that, and, yeah. and that's the other side of it. Like I kind of looked down, and this is what my talk at WordCamp this year was. It, it wasn't a developer talk by any stretch. What I did was I sat down and I showed people who have no experience programming how to build uh, like a data-driven sort of web applications. And I used, it, I just used plugins, right? Like I used Gravity Forms. Um, I used a plugin called WP Types, which basically, I think that's what it's called. It lets you create custom post types and custom fields. And, and then it lets you create views, which basically lets you take this data and without writing a line of code, like place it inside of themes and control how it gets displayed and stuff. So it was a, it was a two hour talk and I was able to show these people how to like take that user input like using a form and mm-hmm. save it save it in WordPress as a custom post type so save it save it as like data that WordPress can actually understand and then display it and be able to filter it on the front end right so we built this like little quick uh, classified ad sort of Kijiji style thing in 2 hours without writing a line of code right which is pretty amazing if you think about it and these are people that not all of them are programmers and they were all kind of like the wheels were just spinning like wow I can build a ama- like I could all of a sudden I could build these amazing things right um, and I think if you're a developer that's one thing like WordPress gets you sort of yeah. lets you hit the ground running and get started quickly mm-hmm. but I think the real power is if you're not a developer because the I mean the plugin like architecture and the amount of plugins out there it's it's like if you can conceive of some sort of functionality it's already been built and it's just like a few clicks away, right? Which is pretty powerful, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's kind it, of like um, it sort of seems like this. It's kind of like the next step in application development evolution, almost. Like if you think way back to the start when guys were flipping analog switches to program vacuum yeah. tubes, you know, then. Yeah. And then they invented cards even all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. And then like they invented machine language, and then there was came assembler, which made it a little bit easier. And then came C, and like keep building like these layers of abstractions to actually move bits around and stuff. And yeah. now it's to the point where somebody with no background in computer science or development can like conceptually arrange sure. building blocks in into like a working useful application. Yeah, and and I think what's What's great about that, and I mean, this is a lot of what you guys have been talking about, is what that does is it gives the power to the people who actually have the idea and the sort of the the understanding of how products should be built and what's important, rather than the programmers, right? Which don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, a lot of programmers sort of walk both lines and they can do that. But um, if you've got an amazing idea for something and you're thinking, wow, um, how the heck am I going to get this built, right? I need to find someone who can. Right, Rails or PHP or whatever it is, and uh, that's a huge stumbling block. Whereas, really, I mean, you could set up a WordPress site, you could install some plugins, install a theme, and I mean, you could get something that at least functions and works and does what you want it to do and actually test your ideas out really quickly. And I mean, um, obviously, you're not going to build an insanely robust system unless you can, unless you understand development and can write a, up some code. But I think at least for getting like like you guys said the minimum viable product out there it's i mean it's it makes a lot of sense for sure Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i actually have an example of this maybe we can talk about that uh a little bit later but yeah i i've i've built like mvps with wordpress and then taken it around to people and said would you pay for this and that having that feedback right away is that's exactly what you need so i i I spent you know an an evening working it out but then I can go and show people something that works and find out right away, like, do you want to pay for this? Is this something that solves a uh, legitimate pain for you? And uh, you can get that real, like, you know, yes or no. Yeah, like an example of this is a, a number of years ago. It's been a long time now, but I built a... Um, I, I, I launched a website called digitalmediajobs.ca, which is like a job board for d- digital media people. Um and I did it as kind of an exercise. I just wanted to build something. Um, and I built it from scratch using just like vanilla PHP, my, my MySQL. And I, it was ins- an insane amount of work. Like I, it's, it's a r- really robust sort of app. It does all kinds of notifications. People can post jobs. It's like a fully functional job engine, right? And I built it from scratch. And it took me hundreds of hours. And, um, and it was good. I mean, I learned a lot about 
development and all that stuff and launching something. Um, but honestly, now, if I was going to redo it, I could probably build the exact same thing and probably much better in a, in a weekend using WordPress um, and literally have the same website. Um, it's just yeah. like, it, it just makes it so much quicker, right? right? Like, think about the process of, and Kyle, you're a developer, you know this, like, writing HTML for forms and, like, validating yeah. forms and, and yeah. like, the whole crud thing where you're saving stuff to a database and bringing it back and then, like, it's it's... Forget about like something simple. Just building a simple form to send an email is a bunch of work. For I'm sure, like, I was this, yeah, like this huge intricate or intricate prod, product. And then with WordPress, it's like yeah, install Gravity Forms, drag and drop some custom post types, boom, 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 and it's done, right? Like it's it's crazy. Like even the user, the fact that it does like user management stuff out of the box, that's yeah. a huge step because if you like start an app from scratch, yeah, even like you said, even if it's the simplest thing, um, yeah, for sure. Once you once you start diving into that user management and authentication code, you realize like, wow, there's a lot of stuff here that I've got to do just oh, to get sure. yeah. things to a point where I can actually start solving the interesting problem that originally got me building this in the first place. For sure. And I think like, you know, with some of the developers and people I talk to who have an idea and they maybe start pursuing building it from scratch. That's where a lot of people kind of get hung up and burnt out is like, you know, I built an authentication system and uh, users could sign up and stuff and then it just kind of hangs there because, like you said, you invest hundreds of hours into building this thing yeah. just to get users signing up and then it's kind of like, well, this might not be worth it. <laughs> Whereas well, with WordPress, I... you can just, you know, you're good to go right from the start. Yeah, and I mean, you've been there where you get, you're building something and it's kind of like, this stream of consciousness thing where you're like, okay, now I need to do this, then I need to do this, and you start realizing like every everything you add just adds this other another layer of complexity, and it's like, okay, so users can sign up, but what happens if they forget their password? Okay, I got to build a password retrieval exactly. system. How do I make that so it's actually like legitimate? Oh, Christ! Then I got to send them emails, and I got to do this and that. Like, what happens if they want to change the password? Like, oh, it's yeah, and it's sure. just, it gets out of hand real quick. Whereas that's just like you do the 12 second install with WordPress and that's done already, right? Yep. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Um, so I guess sort of leading into the next question. Um, so what, why might somebody want to build a product with WordPress? So we kind of talked a bit about getting quick feedback and, um, and, and, you know, getting your idea out there as quick as possible with as little work, but, what are some of the other benefits that you might get from building your first version of your product with WordPress? Um, you know what? I think um, I think it depends where you're at. Like, if you're someone who is a developer, I can totally understand because I've been there where it's you know how you get you choose sort of a framework or some or um, and I find this with WordPress a lot where especially if you're using plugins to do certain things, right? Like say you decide, okay, I don't want to write this from scratch, so I'll find a plugin to do it. And what happens is you you find fairly quickly that you start changing the way you want to do things to um a, to sort of accommodate what these plugins will allow you to do, right? Um, whereas I think um, with like if you're not a developer, then you have the other side of it where you can just really quickly sort of get up get up to speed with so that's super attractive for people uh, but if you're a developer I can totally see why you why you wouldn't want to go with WordPress although I think to be honest like it um, the biggest thing is the is um, and this is something that takes a while to sort of get to understand like WordPress on the surface is one thing but the the whole way that they've built like they have this insanely huge crazy API behind it that lets you really mm -hmm. do so much stuff, right? With you're not stuck with like install a theme, install a plugin. You you can generate your like you can build your own, even just from the theme files. It's like you start adding stuff to that functions.php file and you can do these crazy things with the whole system, right? Totally. Um, I I didn't really have like I don't really actually have much hands on experience with WordPress, but this summer I rebuilt um a pretty big site for some friends of mine using WordPress, and it was sort of my first uh, foray into the WordPress world, and I couldn't believe 
like you said, the API, how thorough it is, and there's yeah. hooks for everything, anything you can possibly want to do. Yeah, there's it's already there. a fairly well thought out hook for you to just yeah. plug your code into and and do it. I think that like what you just said there cuts into what is what I think why I think WordPress is so strong is the fact that it's been around for so long. So many people use it and there's a such a huge community like if you like the thing I love about WordPress is any it doesn't matter what project I'm working on if I come across a hurdle and I don't know how to implement something all I have to do is type a simple Google search and I'll find the answer within two clicks. And mm -hmm. it always and it's always there. Whereas with others, like if you're just building something from scratch, it's like, well, how do I even verbalize what I'm trying to do? And I mean, you spend six hours going through Stack Overflow stuff and it, it's, whereas with WordPress, it's like, it's just, there's so many people using it and there's, I mean, and, and there's so many people trying to do crazy stuff with it, right? Where it's like, you think you're some crazy edge case but there's like 50 guys trying to do the same thing, right? Right. And uh, I find that all the time where I come across something like, oh, there's no way I'm going to be able to figure out how to do this, and, and I figure it out in a few seconds just from Googling something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the, the same is true for, for non-developers. Like I was trying to uh, – I was looking for a Stripe integration for Gravity Forms, and yeah. you – the same thing, you know, you just type in a Google search, and they don't have one yet, but you can find people that are working on that Oh, yeah. and reach out to them and sometimes they're willing to do the work for free sometimes they're willing to do the work for like a donation to the project and sometimes you can just hire them for the project but yeah. just well, even finding to that exact yeah even speaking to that exact example like this last week i had a project where it's an e-commerce site um and we were we're using the woocommerce engine which is like the the woo themes guys created uh or they they took an open source sort of uh e-commerce thing and they kind of customized it and it's it's pretty good if you if you don't want to get too crazy with customizing things it's it's pretty solid but um, yeah. we were using pay, we were using PayPal as the payment processing which and it was giving us all sorts of grief and it was not working well so I was like I um, I knew about Stripe and I knew it was in Canada now and I wanted to use it so I did a Google search and like in literally in like 20 minutes I had Stripe up and working and mm -hmm. it was just like found a plugin cost me like 20 bucks or something installed it boom and it's working and yeah uh, I mean that's pretty like that's I, like for anyone who's actually tried to integrate with a, like a merchant account and a payment gateway like using code it's insane right like yes yeah. and just to be able to get get up and do that with a, a couple clicks and I mean anyone could have done it like it's not like I didn't have to write any code like anyone could have done that and it it was uh, it was amazing right and that's yeah. pretty powerful yeah, and I, I think that really like illustrates, like just how like like the order of magnitude of time saving that WordPress gives you. It's not just a little bit of time saving; it's a lot. Oh, like yeah. you can implement a billing system in twenty minutes. Like yeah. in the past, it's taken me up, like up to a month to build a billing system for oh, products. Yeah. You know, for sure. if you're, build, if it, you're building yeah. against the API, like it's. Again, and there's so many edge cases and all those use cases yeah, that you've for sure. you've got to figure out. And yeah. like <laughs> to go guy. from a month of development full time to 20 minutes, like that's not even in yeah. the same ballpark. Yeah, well, and the, the and the the end result, like what the users see, is just beautiful. Like it's boom, mm -hmm. it just works. Like if they they put their credit card information in, we had to buy it like an SSL certificate and all that, and boom, it was done. Right, it and it um, yeah. It's just so much better than PayPal, where it's like, I don't know if you've ever integrated <laughs> stuff with PayPal. Even if you're doing, like, the Website Payments Pro stuff, where you're actually using their API, and, I mean, it's a nightmare, right? Yeah. Or, or using their IPN system, the instant payment notification, it's just so flaky. Right. And never yeah. mind the, 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 the flip side, of, or the other side of PayPal, where, like, you hear these horror stories of people, like, getting having, like, $20,000 worth of revenue, like, held hot <laughs> by PayPal because they yeah. Didn't, because all of a sudden they sold some stuff one day and PayPal thought they were fraudulent, right? It's it's not good. I was really sweating that this summer actually when I put on that font design workshop because oh, right. I had never I had never used PayPal hardly at all for like I had my account for years but never used it. And yeah. then we planned this event and sold all the tickets within like a really tight one month span and you know went from like no PayPal use to twenty thousand dollars all in 
the course of a few weeks. <laughs> and, yeah, and then sure. a couple of weeks later, all these payments went out to all our instructors who are like all over the world. So I just like, yeah. I was a little bit terrified. <laughs> yeah, you hear horror stories for sure. I had a client last week who was actually on the Dragon's Den, um, oh, yeah. like the CBC show. And, no way. Uh, yeah, and their whole site that I built, it's all this crazy like e-commerce nonsense and it's uh it's re it's pretty neat but it's all PayPal, right? So I was just waiting for it. it's like to get a, an email. <laughs> they blocked this out like yeah, but it didn't happen, so. <laughs> what well, when um sorry, go ahead, Justin. No. Um I was just going to say um on like on the subject of like what you can build with WordPress, one thing we haven't <laughs> talked about yet is multi-site and uh, I've used that already. So basically, multi-site allows you to, um, it's kind of like what WordPress.com uses to host all of the, you know, like sub blogs, like your own blog network. And so, one, I mean, one way to prototype with WordPress is to have just a, a vanilla install and people can, you know, like create uh, user accounts on that install. But I've also used it where you can create a whole new instance of, WordPress on a network. And um, if we're talking about like prototyping SaaS apps, like uh, re recurring revenue where people can go in, create an account, and they have their own defined account where they can have multiple users, you know, within right. that account. Yeah. Um, the It's like multi-site. So we've, we've talked about how much time, you know, just a regular install of WordPress saves you. But think about like creating a whole system where people can create, you know, it's like, like you could replicate Basecamp easily with, for sure, with multi-site. Sure. Yeah. And yeah, the way, even the way it works with subdomains and stuff, like I've built stuff where it's like a user can register and boom, they have their own subdomain. It, it just happens like that. And there's no configuration like that's, that's super, super. Uh, yeah. Powerful. Again, that's, you're talking weeks cut out of a development oh, yeah. cycle, like if that was built from scratch. Mm -hmm. sure. And yeah. it's not like that stuff is easy to do in Rails. Like, you know, it's a couple lines of configuration, but that's just wiring in the basic mechanics, right? Like once you start tackling those edge cases and everything, there's yeah. still a ton of work to do in a subdomain based app. And if you can yeah. get it working in a matter of hours, it's again, a huge win. No, for sure. And there's even like the the plugins that you talk about for user management where you can have like, what's the one, uh, WP member or whatever. And there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a couple of them where it's like you can create a whole member like where member, member where people can sign up for membership and pay for it. And it's subscription based and there's different payment options. And, and then you can give them access to different content and there's sort of tiered levels so you can this level of member gets this level of content, like that's a plugin and you can install that. Exactly. Like, it's crazy. Like it's, that's, that's like a whole membership system in site. Like you could, some, anyone could build a business off that. If you've got something of value, like, oh, hey, I've got some uh, videos that I created or tutorials or I've got this or that. I mean, like you click, tw you click 12 times and you've got your system set up to, to make that a viable business, right? Which is, it's crazy. Yeah. So what I think, I think I've said that seven times now. It's crazy. It it is yeah. crazy. Like anyone that's a product manager out there, um, like when you know how long it takes to develop things and billing systems is one, like it takes forever. But even to like get if you're starting an app or you have a startup and you're just working to get kind of your initial thing built, your MVP built, I mean that can be that can take months and months and months. So people want it to be about three months and usually ends up being about six months. And then by the time you get feedback, you might be eight months. So these things just keep going out. And by eight months, you might have built the wrong thing. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, this could be a way for people to build something. And I mean, it, there might not always be a plugin available, but um, you might be able to get 70, 80% of the way there and then maybe build what you need to build and then at least start showing it to people and seeing if it actually solves a legitimate yeah. problem. I'll give Definitely. you a, like a, a, a real world like example of that exact thing. So I'm working with um, a company right now called Poppy Barley and they're, um, ah, yes. Yeah, they're doing, it's fantastic. There's two sisters and they're, uh, they're creating made to measure boots. 
Um, so basically women who have trouble buying boots because their feet are all different sizes and stuff, which is pretty common, um, they can go on this website and they measure their feet and their legs and stuff and they get these custom measured, like, down to the micro centimeter or whatever, <laughs> boots, right? Um, so they came to me, a, like, a number of months ago and we sat down and they... Want, they had this idea, and they wanted to, it to be. They wanted to build a site where people could do all these measurements and submit them, and um, and pay for them. So full e-commerce, all that sort of stuff. But they're a startup, and I mean, they're they're part of the whole um, startup Edmonton. They're involved with all that, and they're um, um, they wanted something quick that they could sort of just. We want to see if this is viable, and we don't want to spend fifty thousand dollars building an insane custom system to do that, which makes a lot of sense, right? Like, why would you want to throw that money away? Um, so what we did is we used WordPress, and we used um, most of it. Like, I, I had to do some custom stuff, but most of it was WordPress, um, WooCommerce. We used um, Gravity Forms. There's actually, a, like, a tie-in. There's a Gravity Forms WooCommerce plugin, which actually lets you, like, create these crazy intricate forms and tie them into, like, a product as part of WooCommerce. Um, and it did everything they wanted to do. And I mean, there were some compromises, like they had these big grand ideas of things that they wanted to do, but that just weren't really viable. Like it would have been like just way too much work to bend WordPress or the WooCommerce more, uh, WooCommerce to sort of do what they wanted. But um, in the end, they, they, they got what they needed for a, like a fraction of what they would have if they'd gone custom. And now they're up and selling their boots, right? And it's... Uh, and that was all WordPress, right? And so it's a perfect example of that. I think that's very cool because, um, like, Poppy Barley is like probably one of my favorite startups in in Edmonton right now. I just think they're doing such a great job with like yeah, everything sure. with their with their branding, with their product, with their yeah. story. They're kind of like a textbook case of a startup that's doing everything right. Yeah, and no, absolutely. And, so, uh, like, and, kind and of that's not you. that's not a mistake, right? Like they, oh, they they're it's, very it's all by very design. Smart. They, yeah, they really know what they're doing, which is it's fantastic. Yeah. So it's cool to see that you know they're also on the technology side taking this very pragmatic, lean approach to you know building something to test the idea and get it out there. Just it kind of fits with you know they're doing everything else right. I should have probably assumed that they were you yeah. know ha approaching the web strategy part. The right way as well, and yeah. and the, and and the whole time it was like, okay, they came to me and they said, we want to test the waters, and this is version one of what we what our like what our vision is, right? So let's make it happen, and we did, and I have no doubt that I have no doubt that they'll be successful, and when they are, they'll come back and they'll say, okay, we want to up this a little bit and maybe go with something a little more custom, which makes right. sense, right? Because then they can they can justify it because they're it it like there's a business case for it, right? But if you're just starting out, like you have no idea if your business is going to fly, and I mean, anyone out there who's ever started a business knows that like you you don't want to just all of a sudden dump a bunch of money if you don't have to, right? Like for sure, know, especially if you're bootstrapping it, right? I mean, you you want to be able to to get in as quick and as as lean as you can. Podcast hosting is provided by Transistor.fm. 
They host our MP3 files, generate our RSS feed, provide us with analytics, and help us distribute the show to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. If you want to start your own podcast or you want to switch to Transistor, go to Transistor.fm slash Justin and get 15% off your first year.